Namo Buddhaya. Welcome back to Monks in the Morning from Colombo Dhamma Friends of Mahame Onawa. We're so glad that you're joining us today. In the last episode, we started to learn the Punya Abhisandha Sutta, the way to always have merit flowing into our lives. The first way, remember, is to have strong confidence in the enlightenment of the Supreme Buddha. The way that we can get this is by learning about the qualities of his mind and how his mind is very different than our own. We can see how easily we get attached to things, don't we? We have favorite clothes, favorite foods, favorite TV shows and games, but the Supreme Buddha didn't have attachments to any of these things. His mind was completely unattached to sensual pleasures, and most importantly, he taught the way for us to also become unattached to these things. This is why we can have unshakable confidence in him. We'll learn more about that today. Now let's take the refuges and the precepts. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Namo tasse bhagavato arehato Samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arehato Samma sambuddhase Namo tasse bhagavato arehato Samma sambuddhase Buddhang saranang gachami Dhammang saranang gachami Sanghang saranang gachami Dutiyampi buddhang saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Dhammang Saranang Gachami Dutiyampi Sanghang Saranang Gachami Dhatiyampi Buddhang Saranang Gachami Tatiampi dhammang saranang gachami Tatiampi sanghang saranang gachami Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu Say after me, I observe the precept of Abstaining from killing beings. I observe the precept of abstaining from stealing. I observe the precept of Abstaining from sexual misconduct. I observe the precept of Abstaining from telling lies. I observe the precept of Abstaining from taking Intoxicating drinks and drugs With the refuge of the noble triple gem I observe these precepts For happiness in this life. 
for rebirth in heaven to escape from the sufferings of sansara may it help me may it be a blessing sadhu 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 namo tassa bhagavato arhato samma sambuddhassa homage to the blessed one the worthy one the supremely enlightened one sadhu 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 meritorious children now we have learned so far that only by purifying the mind we can live happily only by purifying the mind we can control the bodily and verbal actions so a purified mind will help us to live happily by doing wholesome actions the purified mind will not let you to think twice to do good deeds your mind will be endowed and be ready to do good deeds so our great teacher the supreme buddha was able to completely eliminate all the impurities from his mind he discovered the way of doing so without the help of a teacher and became a samma sambuddha therefore since the buddha first became an arahant arahang means before samma sambuddho uh, when you chant the itipiso bhagava arahang samma sambuddho stanza so that is the first quality arahang is the first quality then the second one is samma sambuddho the buddha is known as a samma sambuddho as well and he is an arahant too so now let's learn what's special in becoming an arahant dear children look at our lives we see with our eyes we hear with our ears smell with our noses taste with our tongues feel with our bodies and use our minds to think these processes are like pouring oil into a pile of sand just as the oil absorbs into the pile of sand our mind also absorbs all these sensations our senses seeing hearing smelling tasting feeling and thinking also helps impurities to grow in our minds not everything that we see and hear will calm our mind there are things that are agreeable pleasurable and arousing defilements when you see such things now for arahants even though the senses are the same even if they see uh, things that they would get angry in arahant's mind impurities do not grow our supreme buddha explains this using a beautiful simile great arahants experience the world like drops of water rolling off a lotus leaf the water will never get absorbed on a lotus leaf dear children the buddha says arahants see the same objects like you and i do but the difference is that objects doesn't arouse bad thoughts in their minds nothing can arouse lust hatred or delusion in the mind of a great arahant just like how water droplets cannot be absorbed by lotus leaves i hope you can understand children this simile the normal nature of our mind is when we see things we regret we cry for things we hear we get stressful and for the things when we think about the future we get stressful so arahants can also hear sounds and understand them just like we can but sounds don't stick as a defilement in their mind 
that sound will not transform into a bad thought in the mind. It is the same with smells, taste, feeling and thoughts according in the mind. That's the amazing nature of the mind of an arahant and our great teacher. The Supreme Buddha who was the first arahant in the world maintained this state of mind for 45 years children that did not decline. So dear children, let's look an example. The wealthy businessman Anatha Pindika built a beautiful monastery in Savatthi for our Supreme Buddha to reside in. He spent a large amount of money building it and he made a special room called a kuti in Singhala, a Sugandha kuti, a fragrant kuti for the Buddha. The walls of this kuti were made out of expensive white sandalwood. The Supreme Buddha, out of compassion to Anatha Pindika, accepted the special room and resided in it. Now, dear children, at the end of the rainy season, it is customary for the Buddha to travel from village to village on foot teaching Dhamma to people. The Supreme Buddha leaves his place of residence just like a swan that leaves a lake. Leaving everything behind, there is no fixed place for the Buddha to spend the night in. On the way, it could be under a tree or in a cave. The Buddha didn't see a difference between the luxurious and humble dwellings he came across on his journeys. Dear children, see the greatness of a mind that realized the Dhamma. If it was us, we would keep touching the sandalwood walls and enjoy its scent. Wouldn't it be difficult for us to leave all these luxuries behind? Look how a person who has totally cleansed his mind of all defilements leaves everything behind without any attachments. Dear children, we cannot imagine the difficulties faced by our Supreme Buddha in a country like India during that time. His proclamation of enlightenment was met with many challenges from people. Many people tried to discredit the Buddha's claim. For example, think of the effort Devadatta must have taken to discredit the enlightenment of the Supreme Buddha. It was Devadatta who planned and released the intoxicated elephant Nalagiri onto the path of the Supreme Buddha. Before this, Devadatta may have told people that it is test to see if the Buddha really is an Arahant. If the Buddha fears the elephant and takes a step back, that will prove that he is not an Arahant. We get scared and agitated even when a tamed elephant moves his trunk. Dear children, our great teacher Supreme Buddha calmly walked with the monks on the same path as the approaching elephant. On seeing the approaching elephant, Venerable Ananda thought, I must sacrifice my life before this elephant does any harm to the Supreme Buddha. And jump in front of the Buddha. Do you see the magnitude of the problems the Buddha had to face? The Buddha said to Venerable Ananda, Ananda, get behind me. The Buddha didn't even take one step back. Can you see the beauty of an awakened mind? The noble qualities of an arahant were visible throughout the life of the Buddha. It is only by studying suttas that we learn more details about the noble qualities of the Supreme Buddha. The Indian society at that time was dominated by Brahmins. In the social structure, they were the highest caste. The Brahmins lost their top position in society after the Buddha started preaching Dhamma. Therefore, the Buddha faced many challenges from the Brahmins, but he faced all them without any fear, agitation or lamentation. These are some reasons that will help us to develop unshakable faith in the Supreme Buddha. As a truly and fully awakened one, this faith is called Sadda in Pali. So, may you have the opportunity to develop confidence in the Buddha. Throughout his life, our Supreme Buddha practiced his teachings with a mind free of defilements. This is the Buddha, our great teacher, who showed us the path to enlightenment. This firmly rooted faith is what turns into a first river of merit that flows into our nurturing happiness in our lives. So, dear children, today we learn about the Arahan quality in detail. In the next sermon, we will continue learning more about the Supreme Buddha's great qualities so that the wonderful rivers of merit will start flowing into our lives. Sadhu, 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 Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya. Dear Dhamma friends, today I will be talking about the 11 benefits of loving kindness. Number 1. One sleeps well. 
so you will be able to sleep peacefully at night. Number two, one wakes in comfort. Number three, one will see no evil dreams, so no nightmares will break your sleep. Number four, one is dear to human beings. Number five, one is dear to non-human beings, so you will have no hatred towards anyone. Number six, the deities protect one, so you will have their protection always. Number seven, neither fire nor poison nor weapon can affect one, so nobody can hurt you in that way. Number eight, one can concentrate the mind quickly, which helps a lot in school or at home. Number nine, one's facial complexion is serene and beautiful. Number ten, one dies without confusion, so you can die very peacefully. Number eleven, if one doesn't attain a higher state of enlightenment, one will be reborn in a Brahma world, so you'll be born in a good world. These benefits will help a lot in school, at home, and at work. So I hope you all practice loving kindness and have metta towards everyone, hoping to attain the supreme bliss of Nibbana in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Namo Buddhaya. Metta Bhavana, loving kindness meditation. Now we'll practice the instructions that we learn in the Karaniya Metta Sutta about having a mind that wishes that everyone in the world was free from all kinds of suffering. While we're developing thoughts of loving-kindness in the mind, try hard to keep your body still. I know this is difficult, but if our body doesn't stay still, it's hard to keep our minds calm and concentrated. You know, even for adults, it can be difficult to keep the body from moving, so don't feel bad at all if you notice that you've moved. Just sit up straight, put your hands back together in your lap, close your eyes, and think in this way. May I be free from anger. May I be free from ill will. May I be free from jealousy. May I be free from mental suffering. May I be free from physical suffering. May I live in peace. May I live happily. May all beings in this place be free from Jealousy. 
be free from mental suffering be free from physical suffering may they live in peace may they live happily may all beings in this province be free from anger be free from ill will be free from jealousy be free from mental suffering be free from physical suffering may they live in peace may they live happily may all beings in this country be free from anger be free from ill will be free from jealousy be free from mental suffering be free from physical suffering may they live in peace may they live happily may all beings in this world be free from anger be free from ill will be free from jealousy be free from mental suffering be free from physical suffering may they live in peace may they live happily may all beings be free from anger be free from ill will be free from jealousy be free from mental suffering be free from physical suffering
It was great to spend time with you again today. We hope that you learned something new, and we really hope that you can use what you learned as you go about the rest of your day. I don't know if you noticed, but this is episode number 200 of Monks in the Morning. So, with a milestone like that, we'd like to especially think about all the people who've helped to make this possible. All of the supporters who pay for uh, the internet and the ability to distribute the podcast online, all of the monks who have worked to share Dhamma sermons, and all the lay people who help with production and editing and making segments. And, of course, especially, we want to have gratitude for our teacher, Lokusanya Hunksa, who makes it possible for these monasteries to operate and to spread the Dhamma in the way that we do. So, with hearts full of gratitude, we can share all the merit that we've collected, not only by listening to the show today, but all the shows that we've listened to, all the Dhamma that we've learned, all of the wholesome actions that we've practiced because of learning the Dhamma in this way. So may all those who've helped to make this show possible rejoice in this merit. May they have happy minds recollecting these wholesome actions. May they soon experience for themselves the supreme bliss of Nibbana in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sad, sad, sad. Namo Buddhaya. 